is, is there cannot be, probably most of you uh, have heard that, that there cannot be peace without justice. I expect, I expect the, like other answers and seeing like knowing that other people think differently, like about violence and peace and how to keep it in the neighborhood. I, I think that's the thing I really like a lot. I think uh, it's the young people who are saving the neighborhood. And the reason I say that is because of schools like uh, uh, Sinclair, you know, Peace and Education Alternative High School is giving uh, young people a second chance, but it's doing more than that than just education. It's giving them an, ex an example and a model of the exact kind of thing we're talking about, dialogue and conversation and breaking boundaries, especially when game boundaries get formed by adults and other people who say, well, this is our territory. It's like, well, no, you know, doesn't mean it's not your neighborhood, but to cross over and to begin to get to know each other means that you find out we all have the same color of blood, that we can talk to each other. Um, and, and in fact, um, I think it's the young people who are, can use creative imagination to get those dialogues to happen. Over 
95,000. 95,000 people, and um, there's like a, for each thousands of people, there's supposed to be an amount of green space. And Little Village was like in the lowest of uh, people having green space. And green space means park, yeah. um, anything like, you know, like that. And so that's like, a, that's, in, that's a injustice. That's, envir that's what we call environmental injustice. Because if you go to other places that they have less people living there, and they have like a lot more green space. So um, is, that's the name, Little Village Environmental. So Little Village Environmental Justice Organization is justice for the environment. For me is, it can be individual peace, but it also connects with all of your different communities that you are a part of. Because I think when we think about community, it's very easy to say, my community is my neighborhood. But even within that community, there's smaller communities. So for me, I have myself, I wanna worry about peace for me, peace for my friends, peace for my family. I mean, these communities get bigger and bigger, you know? So I think working with El Vejo has, it has taught me a lot about peace for not only my smaller communities, but bigger communities. So mm. schools too, you know, what does that mean for peace in schools? What does it mean for peace in a park? Yeah. Um, I think it has to do with feeling safe um, and that can have different definitions for everybody. But so for me, peace is safety and peace is happiness. Peace to me is being humble. Like, being kind to people, you know, serve the people, you know, right. help each other as a community. We have positive and negative inside of us. And uh, I think to find peace within is to submit that evil and make them your friend. Um, so to me, peace starts inside with like knowing yourself and like being good with yourself. So when I was younger, like I grew up in the village, right? And we hung around with gangbangers all the time, and my family, I was around that stuff. And I remember I wasn't at peace with myself, so if I was like in the street and somebody looked at me wrong, you know, right away, he's like, oh, what's up, man? And yeah. you, you start little wars, little little dramas. And um, that it wasn't even about the guy looking at me wrong, you know? Because the guy probably had a problem with himself, and he, looked, he probably wasn't even looking at me. And then I had a problem with myself not being secure, and I want to act tough, you know? So that, that starts conflict. So to me, peace is really like, getting to know yourself and I think in nowadays society you gotta go through something like you gotta go through like a, um, you gotta go through a war within yourself where like you you come back to your basic elements and uh, you under, you start understanding yourself and like oh why do I act like that or why did yeah. I say that like yeah. why did why do I have these thoughts and you, you know when you go back to your basic element and you become humble you, you start questioning yourself instead of questioning the world around you think communication is very needed um, so you have to learn or you don't have to but if you want to you can learn to listen more um, maybe talk less but also talk when you know something that maybe the next person doesn't know welcome to the little village park this is park number 553 number 553rd park in, in Chicago um, this park took 10 years to get this land um, was contempt. Well, they parked uh, trailers here, and for many years it was privately owned. Uh, it was it was contaminated also because the company used to make shingles here, so there was a lot of contaminants in the ground. And what what had to happen here was uh, for ten years we were asking for a park. The different places were looked at, but this was like the, the best place that that they, they thought we could uh, have it at. And um, the struggle was like hard because uh, we had to raise a lot of money. We had to ask people for money. The the, the Chicago district, we had asking for money and like nobody was trying to pay for this. And uh, what had to happen, they took out like five to 10 to 12 feet of uh, soil in different places because it was contaminated. So they took that out and they, they capped it with like a clay, different soils, different like rocks and diff like, you know, different types of, uh, of uh, material. And then so like we're, we're on top of a bunch of material, like the land is like really, really deep. And after that, this park, um, there's some few injustices like this part costed. Man, I don't remember the exact um, the exact numbers, but this part costed. I think it was about two million. Man, don't quote me on that. But the point that I'm trying to get at is that this part costed very little compared to bigger parks. I mean, compared to smaller parks that they put like triple, four times the money in other communities that is more of people with with more money. So. Um, 
they, they just wanted to put um, soccer soccer uh, fields and baseball fields and they, they wanted to put a little playground and uh, we that was a big uh, battle too we had a meet with community people and like design the park the skateboard was designed by the kids the basketball court they only wanted to give us one basketball court because they said in these communities that's where crime and all kinds of stuff like that happens so uh, we have we have more than six one two three four five six we have about 12 basketball courts and that was because people say yeah they're like hey we need we need more we need more we want to play basketball the guard the the kids um playground we had to design it with parents and we had to like just go to park district meetings like in the board and we had to like basically like it felt like begging but like we had to do it in the most dignified way so we don't have to be begging but uh if it wasn't for people getting together having meetings showing up a park district deep with like you know telemundo noticieros we wouldn't have it, we just have like a big like field of like soccer because they think that's how we do play soccer. Okay, great. So gentrification is basically uh, when a, a section or part of the city, inner city, that is deemed blighted. Does anybody know what blighted means? Blighted means that it's empty. There's nobody there. It's, there's nothing useful there. Obviously, most of the time that real estate agents and, and developers deem us an area of land that way, there are people living there, usually people of color. And that's when they start building, buying properties for cheap, building new residencies for a different population with a different economy. Okay? Forcing the property values to go up and then forcing everybody else that's been there for already to move out. <laughs> unable to participate in the new homes, the new businesses that cater to that new population. The result of that is that it keeps the city segregated. If you go down west, uh, past Western that way, you're gonna see a different, a main different population. You're gonna see different businesses, right? Coffee shops, uh, boutiques, things that really are unaffordable for for everybody else, okay? And uh, so, whoever, if you ever hear somebody say, well, gentrification is natural, there's been different communities here. <laughs> no, that's not natural when every time people of color have to move, they get poorer, and every time white people move in, they get wealthier automatically because the property values go up. That's not natural, that's racist, that's everything. Um, so, other things that you're seeing here, because one of the results of gentrification is that it erases the history of the community that was there before. <laughs> the flags, the light posts, the buildings, all the things that you see here are direct results of our community saying, hey, we don't want to be erased. We're going to make it difficult to be erased. Lincoln Park, has anybody heard of Lincoln Park? Mm -hmm. The wealthiest neighborhood in Chicago? Has anybody heard of Wrigleyville and Boys Town? Yeah. Wicker Park? Wealthy, fun, Wicker Park? All of those were once Puerto Rican neighborhoods. But the idea of modern colonialism is that you had to justify the taking of people's lands, resources, and labor. In order for me to do that, what did I do? I declare that someone who had a darker skin was made to serve me, to give me his or her land, to give me his or her labor, to give me his or her land. And so I was able to justify that. For me, we can only be at peace when we can reconcile the very possibilities of people that are the ones who have the power to admit that they have it and to do something about their privileges and to say, you know what? I need to share some of my wealth. I need to include my brothers and sisters that I have excluded from the human category. That's where I think peace begins. To the degree that African American people, to the degree that Native American people and all marginalized people are ever able to self-determine, self-actualize, and be self-reliant, to that degree we have peace. One of the things that I think is a, 
People focus a lot on the violence in the neighborhoods in the city. I know it's something that's on everybody's mind, but I think there's a lot of good stuff happening around here. It's an urban area, and this kind of comes with the territory, but I see a lot of people doing good work to try to make places safer for young people. Peace is basically right, right relationship. So being in good relationships with one another. So it's not just the absence of violence and conflict, but it's that, that we have a, a relationship. We have a connection with one another. And what happens to you impacts me, and what happens to me impacts you. The Fresh Blossom is basically a, a getaway from all the violence and stuff. Like, it's all peace in. Mm -hmm. Like, sometimes it'd be different gangs and stuff now. It changed part of my life because before I knew what Precious Blood was, I was on the corner selling drugs, gang banging, selling all type of hours. I met Precious Blood like like uh, like a tongue was lifted off my shoulder. Like I can come down, I don't gotta watch my back. I can have fun, I can joke around, I can go on activities, I can learn more, sit down and focus. Pretty much anything, anything you need. Just get it out. I like how we, you know, went around, talked to different, different um, communities. And what I learned today was that peace and violence, you know, there's a lot of solutions to it, but like, in order to get peace, you gotta look at like get out the circle and look at the poverty, the rich. Put everything like together. I don't know. We could try this together. You know? It's not all about just violence, man. Yeah. And he was talking about you know the different aspects in which people are classified, which broke peace in communities. And well, I mean that really hit me hard because I got a further understanding of why it's so complicated to bring stuff back to peace. You know. And during the focus group. Um, what I most liked was that I could hear my um, group's opinions and how they felt um, in the neighborhood, what peace meant to them and how they felt safe. So now I understand that um, we all feel different and we all want to like stay alive in this neighborhood since there's too much violence. What I really like about this project is that um, I like how everybody is really communicative and help each other. I think downtown with the Black Hawks in them, <laughs> throwing up the peace sign and like approaching them and stuff like basically telling us like how to keep peace in their neighborhood and stuff like that. It wouldn't be peace without, you know, without like knowing your things and like your right and things like that. Actually, yes, they have. I, I think it's mostly about communication. It's all about communication because you could see somebody across the street and then you could just like throw a dirty look and they'll th th throw it back. You don't know if they have a gun and then they'll just take it out and shoot. No, it's about communication. That's not communication. Communication is like saying, hey, what's up? Um, what, like, what's happening? Why, what's happening? Like, why are you doing that? This and that. I think that's that's the most important thing like on that area that made me change like how I saw peace. I also like that like the fact of going up to people is actually peaceful too because you have that mindset that um everybody's gonna be nice. Something I learned about this um, group discussion within my team is that um, you need to learn about poverty in order to know about peace and it's not that it's just that you need to learn about people's personalities about who they really are and what they think about the definition about peace um, at first, I wasn't very interested in helping make peace in the community because I feel like no one can stop that. It's very impossible. But in doing this project, going to this different communities and speaking a positive message to everyone or trying to get their input about how the community is, um, it really felt, it really made me feel like I helped 
in a, in, in a way to make peace in the community, just to get people to talk about it, thinking about it, maybe it, it might change something in the future. And I not I not really um, learned that it's a lot of people that is making trying to make peace in the community that I didn't know about, and it helped. It, it really helped me want to really become part of the community making peace. You, you're like we went out there and expected something from people, and then they just give us something different. Like I interviewed this one um, teenager. He was playing basketball. You know, he, he looked he looked like a tough guy. Just just like working out or something and I thought okay this guy is just gonna talk about whoa we're all here um, like I don't know talk about I actually was suspecting like game banging issues or something but no he that guy actually um talked to us about how he was involved in the community also how he was helping um little kids or whatever um but yeah you you get you you receive um other stuff than what you go into these neighborhoods and expect.